my dear brothers and sisters, it's a wonderful day again that the Lord has actually enabled us actually to be here. And today I'm very much thrilled to see how this black relationship with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is all about. And uh, there are a lot of events now have been actually happening. There are a lot of black relationship with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's actually becoming more stronger and stronger and stronger. And I think it is because they both share a deep history of uh, what exactly happened. Both share deep history. They both understand what persecutions are. Both They both understand what segregation is. They both have, they both have endured the pain of persecutions and segregation and that is why when when, when a black person speaks uh, I, I think um, members of the church will understand them more because they come from that background they both come from that background and that's why we can see also uh, in these latter days uh, that unity between the church that is the saints and, and, and the black communities that unity is becoming more stronger and stronger and uh, today I was privileged actually to follow Elder uh, L. Quinton Cook. Uh, he had actually participated in one of the Black Summit uh, Leadership Forum. And uh, he was also given an honor to actually open uh, in the Black Church Leadership Summit. That honor. And uh, without further ado, let us just actually see what happened. Uh, please welcome. It was a spirited group who gathered for several days in Princeton, New Jersey. The topic of religious freedom was the focus of discussion and cause for celebration. <laughs> Representing the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at the Black Church Leadership Summit was Apostle Quentin L. Cook who opened the seminar. He reflected on the views expressed by Mormon prophet Joseph Smith in the 1840s. Joseph Smith linked the importance of religious liberty with the value of each human soul. The first law of everything that is sacred, he taught, was the inalienable right of man to think as he pleases and worship as he pleases. At a worship service held at the Princeton Theological Seminary, Bishop Charles C. Blake of the Church of God in Christ reminded followers of the cause. We who are faithful to biblical Christianity must organize ourselves to defend religious freedom and to defend our right to answer Christ's call in every area of our lives. The conference, hosted by Dr. Jacqueline Rivers and her husband, the Reverend Eugene Rivers, are the founders of the Seymour Institute, an organization dedicated to protecting faith, family, and religious freedom. The issue of religious freedom for black people and the black church is really the issue of survival. All of these secular organizations who all believe the fiction that God was dead have now discovered that God is very much alive. In his remarks, because Elder Cook called, shared the Latter-day Saint perspective. Even when the issues are complex and emotionally charged, we believe that productive dialogue is possible when all involved acknowledge that the other's freedoms deserve protection. Throughout the conference, the leaders deepen their resolve to unite and protect religious freedom. And if he's father of all of us, then all of us are brothers and sisters. That's right. There are implications there that we must work out and talk out, and we need to be free to discuss it. We need to be free to talk about it. Uh -huh. I commend you on your strong principled position that you're taking on these issues and on the matter of freedom of religion. It is integral to the survival of what we do that we be free to pursue it. We really do want to reach out to all of these black denominations and bring them in because the black church has an important role to play yeah. on issues of religious freedom. Right. You were in a discussion at probably the highest level with some of the smartest people in the country. It's the beginning. You've piqued their curiosity and their interest and so we look forward to having more discussions. If there is to be fairness for all, no one should face a threat to their very existence. All should affirmatively recognize that everyone is entitled to protection for their core freedoms and interests. So whether Christians are Muslim, are atheists, 
we enrich the society when we are free to act in accordance with our conscience. Man, this issue of religion freedom is, is becoming hot. It's becoming seriously hot, you know. This is something that is so serious and uh, people need to be very prayerful. They need to be very, very prayerful. It is, it is a force that is trying to deny people the right to worship God, you know, and uh, to deny them also their right to express themselves the way they are. And, uh, and from one of the talks that was given by Elder Christopherson, and he said if there are no religions, then you cannot actually speak of any Bill of Rights, because if people cannot be allowed to co to speak what uh, what is actually convicting them, then what right are we talking about, like uh, the freedom of, of speech and all that? If you take away religion, then you are taking away those rights too. And uh, that talk was very, very good. Uh, Elder Christopherson actually elaborated everything very clearly that made me understand it. And here also we can see Elder Quinton Cook is also clarifying things. And one of the greatest things that is so amazing to me is that uh, they are actually uniting with everyone to declare the stand. And this is the position of the church. Okay, and, 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 and they are joining with everyone who shares that principle and position. You know, they are actually involving everyone. Now, let me just speak something a little. For those who are racist, okay, and those who propagate that the church is racist, do you think a racist church will do something like this? You know, do you think a racist church will be able to, you know, stretch hands and, 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 and join hands with people to fight for a common cause? I think these are some of the things that we need to reevaluate our thinking before we just, you know, speak without the knowledge thereof. So uh, I know what Apostle there has done is, is, is very, very commendable. And I like uh, what that guy, the, the, one of the reverends there told him that uh, he recognizes that uh, the Apostle has spoken with some of the most high ranking people in the society and in their country. And, uh, and, and, and he recognizes the influence the apostles of the church have, you know, in any, any, any country, that influence they have. Uh, uh, and that's what, one thing you need to know, that the Lord says that he will make you sit with kings and dine with, the, with presidents and all that. It's not just by that, it is God doing his work. And, and that is something that we need to, to really, really evaluate and, and appreciate especially as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We belong in a kingdom whose king is the Lord himself, and no unhallowed hand can stop the work from progressing. And that one, I surely know. Otherwise, thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters, for tuning in. And even for you who has not subscribed yet, thank you very much for tuning in. I know maybe you just came across this video and you wanted to see what exactly it's all about. I will encourage you to continue subscribing. And if you want to know more about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, please continue following us. And also we invite you to attend some of our church services which they always uh, begin every Sunday as from 9, that is in Nairobi. But in whatever part of the world, you'll be able to know. Just go inside there and worship with the saints, because the Lord needs you there. Please make sure you go. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.